All right, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so here we go. Um, I just want to kind of remind you guys something here. Okay, because questions have come up. Because uh, as you guys know, I did put up some homework in Canvas, right? So I put that out there to make sure I don't forget to put it. So you want to get this book. What is this? Calculus the what? Calculus Stewart by James Stewart, fifth edition. You want to get this as soon as possible. You guys want to order this online, do your Google search. You guys are experts at this. So you guys want to get that kind of stuff, all righty? All right. So, yes, I did put some things there already. So you go assignment, homework one. You go, oh, Mr. Judge, I'm supposed to read this section? Yes, read that. Then read 2-2, two, two, and then it starts talking about 2-2. Two, two. This is about limits. So, you know, you're not able to do all this right now. Is that true? Could you do all your homework in Chapter 3 in the first day? No. No. Well, I mean, it depends, but we're, we haven't finished the topics. All right. So I just want to let you guys know that. Now, I want to say this to you guys, too. Remember, I use my website right for notes and stuff and these there's resources um where am i where am i nope well, that's weird okay so in calculus one you click on that link so what i'm going to do for calculus one right general limit notes I'm going to I'm going to import this here cuz I'm going to start to use this, alrighty? And you might say, "Well, we're going to import this." And um, anyway, we're going to we're going to review a little bit of this that we talked about yesterday, okay? So yesterday what I did is gave you sort of a background, I should say, in limits. Is that right? We gave you guys a background in limits. Uh, we looked at the numerical approach and then how that related to the graphical approach. Is that right? Okay. And I even gave you a definition to um, how do, you know, what is it, what's the difference between evaluating a function at a point and a limit. So you go, oh, it's right over here. So we looked at the relationship, okay? Now this is a very, very important definition. What was this the definition of yesterday? Anybody know? This is the definition of what we say a function is continuous at a point A. So that means f is what? f is continuous at a. Now, we're going to be looking at this. The reason I kind of start with these two topics at the same time is because it is deceptively, well, it's a simple idea, but it's deceptively simple. The devil's in the details. So we're going to see some examples and examples and how, go, how to go about that, right? So you're looking at something that's important, right? So you say, where is a. Well, A is anywhere here. It's an, it's a, if we say something like this, let's put A over here. Okay, this is an X value. This is what they're referring to. 
And so that point has a y coordinate, not just an x coordinate, and that's the location of f of a. So that point on the curve, ladies and gentlemen, has the address of a comma f of a. All right, you guys good with that one? So I want you guys to see something here, sort of visually here. Um, maybe you have this, well, it's okay. We just want you guys to hopefully see. Uh, it looks like this location and then sort of this location. All right, are you guys good with that? So you might want to remember this important idea. Limits are about approaching, okay? Yes, you have to start to the right or to the left, right? It's a two-handed limit. And so the points on the curve, I forget the colors we were using. I don't remember if orange, orange was on the right, but okay, we'll use that here. The points are approaching that location. So if your approach from the left or the right goes to the same location, and that's the value of the function, well, that's an important idea. We say the function's a nice continuous at that point. So I'm doing two things at once. I'm showing you about limits and functional evaluation and really this definition of continuity. Now, um, I put it under limit notes when I made these notes because that's kind of where you start and why you start to care about limits. Now, this is the most perfect picture in terms of a limit that you can see. All righty, let me say that again. It's, it's an important picture of a limit that you can see. It's the most perfect. And what we say is the function's continuous at that point and, you know, continuity is an important idea in and of itself. Um, you might say, why? Well, if I said to you guys, you know what continuity really feels like as a poet? Is that if you sketch the curve, you never lift up your pencil. We never lift up our pencil at this location Okay, when we sketch that curve. Are you guys okay with that? We never did. Some of you guys might have to sit up front. I hate to say it, but whatever. We'll get some chairs for you guys. So, you know, I'm giving you guys the background for why you care about this important definition. But the devil's in the details. So the details again, remember this? What do you want in order for this to be... Uh, you know, in order to have a actual limit, right? A finite limit. This happens if and only if two things happen. Right? The left-handed limit also equals the what? Right-handed right -handed limit. They have to be the same. They both have to be L. So this is really what we started to talk about yesterday in detail. And then we mentioned what's the difference between functional evaluation. So that's where we're getting at. What do you guys think? All right, you guys remember these things? It's in your notes. Now, if I said to you guys, let's take a look at this particular picture. Is this picture nice and continuous? What do I mean by that? When I drew the curve, what did you guys notice? Did I ever pick up my pencil at any location? No. It's a nice, beautiful, continuous curve. I never picked up my pencil. So that, graphically speaking, again, if I pick, like, for example, two here. Okay? I want you guys to see the graphical picture. As x approaches 2, from what direction? From the right, okay? 
As x approaches 2 from the right now, I'm going to write this down. They're saying the limit now as x goes to 2 from the right, the functions x squared plus 1, that approaches what number? Okay, we're looking at this now. What are you approaching now here? Well, you say what number on the what? on the y-axis. We're approaching this here. Okay? And you say that approach is what? The y-value of 5. That's what you're looking for. Is that true? So graphically speaking, 2 comma 5, that limit value is always the y-value there, right? So this limit equals what? 5. Just graphically. We seen yesterday numerical. Is that right? Yes. Okay, you guys see what I'm saying? So this is the graphical approach. Now, you say, but I, I like numerical. Okay, if you like numerical, and your book might do this. This is the book. The book's going to say, you're going to use you're gonna, it's going to be a right-handed limit. So you might start with what? 3, 2.5, 2.1, 2.01. You guys know what I'm saying? You're getting close to 2 because this is the limit as x goes to the 2 number. So your book is going to use this numerically. And so you might say, well, how do I handle that? You know, I'm, I'm at home. I bought the book. And it wants me to investigate this numerically. Well, all you got to do is what? You plug in those values for x. You plug them in where? I'm going to use the orange because it's the left. Hand. These are x values, OK? You plug them in here. And so the function's x squared plus 1. So the book's going to ask you to do that. And you're going to say, OK, 3 what? What's 3 squared plus 1? And you go, oh, it's 10. OK, 2.5 what squared plus 1? What's this? 7.25. OK, what's the next answer? 2.1. Squared, am I getting closer to 2 from the right? Did you guys notice that? 5.4. And then you go 2.01 squared plus 1. Am I getting closer to 2? Now, this is as far as the book says to go. You might need to go even further. 2.001 squared plus 1. What do you guys start to see? You're, start, you're approaching 2 from the right numerically. What are you going to? You go, i, I got to see more numbers. OK, keep adding more zeros. In fact, you can add even more zeros. Square this, add 1, and what do you get? You're getting closer to what number? 5. Do you guys agree with that? So numerically, we can also see that the limit is what? Five. And that's what your book's going to start to do. And sometimes students look at that and they go, oh, no, what do I do, Mr. Judge? I don't have Microsoft Excel. You use your calculator numerically. OK? Any, anybody have any questions on that, right? So if you notice that, that's what your book's going to kind of express. Um, what about the other side, right? The other limit, we're going to try to go now to 2 from what direction? So we're going to approach 2 from the left now. And so what's going to happen, since we already know this curve is nice and what? Continuous. They're both approaching the same point. It's going to be 5. Is that true? So this is one of the reasons why... The graphical component, when I showed you guys yesterday, curves every calculus student should know. Graphing is an extremely important topic. That 
because it's nice and continuous. They're both going to go to five. And so now they're going to say in the book, just so you guys know, they're going to say use the values also. Um, you got to approach two from one, 1 1.5, 1.9, 1.99, and maybe 1.999, okay? Are we approaching also again? The number two from the right? Because now this is gonna be this limit question now. I'm gonna say this is gonna be the limit really as x goes to two. Sorry, that was from the left, I apologize. So this is from the left, and this is from the what? Right. What's this answer going to be? You know, the book is telling you to use these input values, right? So, I mean, because these are common questions that I get for homework. They go, how do I go about this, Mr. Judge? You, you just use Microsoft Excel, and how do I do it, right? Um, well, plug those values in. 1 squared plus 1, and then what? 1.5 squared plus one, and then what? 1.9 squared plus one, and then what? 1.99 what? Squared plus one, and what do you get? Am I approaching any number? I don't know, let's try another one. Can I get closer? How do I get even closer? Add another nine, square it, add one, and then what? Add like four nines, square it, add one. What do you think I'm approaching? Five. Am I approaching five? What do you guys think? Should I go really crazy? I'm going to get really close. Close to two, is that right? You guys see what I'm saying? Eventually, you, you might, you know, your calculator might just kind of get a little angry at you. Okay, it'll give you like, I don't know what it'll give you. But this is approaching what? Five, okay? You guys okay with that idea? So when you see those questions, the book is just testing you on the numerical approach. Okay? And so what we learned yesterday was that with this approach, when they both are finite and they're the same, what does that even mean again? Okay, That means the limit as x goes to 2 is 5. Now, that's just the limit question. Because to say that the limit is 5, you got to satisfy that definition. They both have to be the same. All right, you guys okay with that? Easy peasy? But I'm going to take it a step further because notice, did I ever evaluate the function at 2? What am, I, what, am I, what am I saying? Did I ever try to find f of 2? No, I never evaluated this function in the TI at two, did I? Never. Because I was working with a limit, a limit is approaching. It's not the value of the function at two. That's a limit, and that's a big deal, okay? Because that's new for some people. They go, what do you mean? Yeah, you're approaching, getting close to that number. From the left or the right. Now, what is the value of the function at two? Well, I can say 2 what squared plus 1, I get 5. All right. So what we know is that the value of the function at 2 is also 5. Okay. Well, we knew that to begin with. How did we know? Because on the graph, 
why graphs are so very important, that address is 2, 5. Okay, you guys with me on that? This is like the most perfect example of the limit and the value of the function being the same. But does that always happen? No. All right, let's, let's, that doesn't always happen, does it? All right, now you might say, well, what are you talking about? Well, we've seen an example of that happening, not happening yesterday. Here's a linear function, they all work this way. Nice and continuous, how do I know? If I sketch this curve, what's the story? I never pick up my pencil for every point on this curve. So for every location, I can sketch this by never picking up my pencil. That's an important detail. All right, same thing here. Picking up your pencil, it's nice and continuous everywhere. So when you evaluate the limits and you work with functions, evaluation, it's the same answer. You go, oh, it's just a different function. And then you say, Mr. Judge, can you please make this a little bit more interesting? Well, even with this curve, over its domain, and we won't go through that detail, but over the domain here, we sketch the curve without picking up our pencil. So these are some nice, beautiful curves that exist. They're going to be continuous everywhere. That left-handed limit equals the right-handed limit and is the value of the function. All right, okay. Sine curves are nice and beautiful as well, right? It works the same way. Now you say, does it really? Well, let's take a look. Since, you know, trig functions are everybody's favorite, right? All right, we already went through that. Do you guys know, if I said to you, what's the limit as x goes to pi of the sine function? Just keeping it simple. Well, where is pi anyway? Do you guys know what pi is? What's the value of pi? 3.141. Is that right? Isn't that where pi is? Um, can I draw the sine curve without picking up my pencil? Yes. So what do you guys think the limit, just graphically, on this curve? Because the location here, this is the x value, but the address is pi comma what? Good. Okay, you guys okay with that? So if I just said to you guys, What's nice about pi? What's the limit answer? Zero. Zero. It's always the what? <laughs> the y coordinate, okay? All right, you guys get with that? Now, it turns out there's kind of an easier way to do this, sort of easier. Remember yesterday, what did I say? You have numerical approaches, you have graphical approaches, and then you have, a, what's, the, what's the other approach, right? Algebraic. Algebraic, good. So I just want to do a little bit of graphical for you to show you guys, hey, as you approach it from the right and as you approach from the left, okay, at this particular location, because sine is nice and continuous, that's going to give us a nice hint about the algebraic approach. Say, so what are you talking about? All righty. Well, I know some of you guys don't have the book yet, right? So let's recall that definition of being continuous at a point. The definition is this. The limit as x goes to 0 of any function is equal to f of 
A. That's when your function f is what? Continuous at what? At A. Now, in your book, there's a way to evaluate limits when you know functions are continuous at points. Here's the easy approach. All I had to do is really find what sine of pi is. What's sine of pi? Zero. You go, really? Sine of pi is zero? Well, how do you know? Because you took the trig course. Do you guys remember? The address is right here. Pi zero. Okay? So sine of pi is actually zero. You're using the continuity definition. Your book actually calls it direct substitution before it continuity. It's the same thing. So when you look at the Stewart book, some of you guys have that. I have a student who's going to come in. She said she's going to come today and try to sell her book to you guys. Um, let's see if she shows up. Is she here? No, she might not be here. She wants to sell her textbook to you guys. Uh, she had it last semester. So anyway, sine of pi is zero. Is that true? How do you guys know? Well, you're looking at it in the graph, by the way. But also, when you evaluate it, sine of pi is zero. So that's actually the limit. You're, you're doing what they're saying right in here. Functional evaluation, all because the function is nice and what? Continuous at that point. So wherever your function's continuous, you can do functional evaluation. And there's nothing unique about pi. This function's continuous everywhere, meaning if they said to you, hey, what's the limit now as x goes to 0 of the sine curve? Well, what's sine of 0? Isn't that also 0? Is that true? You say, how do I know? Well. Take a look, right? You're here, zero. What's that address? Zero comma zero. What's the limit value again? It's the y value. Because remember, we also write this as y equals, right? This is y equals sine x. So I'm going to just start from the beginning the first week to give you some powerful ideas about limits and how they relate to the value of the function and continuity because when the function's continuous at that point, you could just do functional evaluation. Easy peasy. In fact, go back to some of these others like this one here, right? They want to find the limit now. Let's say as x goes to 4 of this function, okay? Let me put it up here. Well, all you're going to have to do then is evaluate the function at what? 4. How do I know I can do that? Because this function at 4, isn't this where x is 4, right in here? It's, it's continuous. The square root function is nice and continuous everywhere it's defined. You don't lift up your pencil. So if you plug in 4 now, right, this is what I'm saying. 4 minus 3, what's this? Square root of 1, this equals 1. So ladies and gentlemen, you got a nice 1 there, okay? And here you go. The power of being nice and continuous. Your book will call this direct substitution. 
They'll, they don't even tell you it's continuous. They go, hey, you use direct substitution. Okay. Now, you guys good with this? You guys okay with that idea? All right. Now, I want to remark about this. What they're going to do really is this. They're not going to give you what I call the, the, um, the easy questions. You go, what do you mean easy? Well, let's look at this. This is another easy question. They're going to say, can you tell me what the limit as x approaches negative pi over 2 for cosine? Easy question, right? Let's go over the answer. What do you guys know about cosine? Nice and what? Continuous. Everywhere. How do I know? I can sketch the curve without picking up my pencil. So it's continuous for those values of x. Ah, then all I got to do is what? Evaluate cosine of what? Negative pi over 2. But you're going to have to know what that is. That's where trig comes in. You go, negative pi over 2, okay, okay, I see. Right. Well, I'm going to do a little detail for you guys. Um, what's, what, where is that, by the way? What is this? What's negative pi over 2? Well, good, thank you. You might say cosine is what? Cosine is odd, is that right? Okay, cosine of pi over 2. How do you guys deduce this? Do you guys know this is like negative 1 times cosine of pi over 2? So what do you guys get here? Negative 1 times what? What's cosine 90 degrees? Isn't that 0? Yeah, zero. And what's negative 1 times 0? So the limit is actually zero. So when I say to you guys, there's a, a, gra there's a graphical approach, there's a geometric approach. Um, if you guys didn't know, this is the location right in here, right? This is where that negative pi over 2 is. So that location negative pi over 2 comma 0, the limit is the y value. Okay? That's the address. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. That's what I call the algebraic approach. All because you deal with the nice, easy questions in a sense that they are nice and continuous. Now, what's going to happen is they're going to test you on functions that have locations where they're not continuous. Or they're going to test you on what's called piecewise functions. And piecewise functions, you know, they're not, they may not be continuous either. So what I did here is I created, ladies and gentlemen, this, this kind of, you know, environment to start talking about these things because it's related to a lot of topics in Calculus 1. You know, it's related to differentiability. Uh, what, ha what does that even mean? And like I said, in the beginning, limits have a lot to do with just looking at graphs, dealing with what a graph and a curve is. That's why, what did I say before? If I go back, you guys remember this website? What do you guys think? Would Bill Gates buy this website? I hope so. I'm going to write to him. Here you go. So I said curves every B STEM student should know. You know, because you guys want to know those, because then you can very instinctively answer some questions. Very instinctively. And it becomes easier. Um, so let's actually talk about the cases that we actually what? Worry about, I should say. You go, what do you mean worry about? Well, the first the first place, and I can actually, you know, again, we can actually do other kind of limit questions. I got some other ideas that I might do you know, in all honesty, with whether it's notes or something. But I, I kind of went, I get a little crazy with some of my notes because this is what I do for fun. Okay, I do this kind of stuff for fun, believe me or believe me. Work on math curriculum for fun. 
You go, oh, is that one fun? Yeah, we could go over something like that even. Oh, let's, should we try this one? What do you guys notice about, first of all, let me ask you this. What kind of function is this? Nope, not a quadratic. What kind of function is this? Well, it is a continuous function, but how would you name that function? If somebody ever said to you, what are you looking at? Polynomial functions. Polynomial functions are very nice continuous functions. The graphs are beautiful. What do I mean by that? They look, well, they're continuous. Yeah, I mean, everything I've showed you so far, at least today, has been nice and continuous, meaning if I draw the curve, I never picked up my pencil. But when we think of polynomial functions, they should remind you of like rolling hills. And that's kind of how you think of polynomial functions. And, and those are like nice, continuous, everywhere functions, polynomials, okay? So when you evaluate limits, you look at this, and they might even scare you. And they go, oh, no, Mr. Judge, please don't scare me. Well, 2x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 4x squared minus 2x plus 7, and you go, you just asked me to evaluate a limit? Do you want me to do the numerical approach? No. Do you want me to do the graphical approach? Meaning, did you guys graph, pol I hope, let me say it this way. <laughs> did you graph polynomials in pre-calculus? Wasn't that a lot of work? Ooh, man, you go, Mr. Judge, you want me to do a graphical approach and graph polynomials from pre-calculus? No. Really, all you got to know is that it's a, it's a polynomial. They're continuous everywhere. Therefore, what can you guys do? This equals f of what? <laughs> Plug in this value. Can you do that? Could you plug in zero wherever there is an x value? And you guys know why I chose zero? Man, zero is like my, one of my favorite numbers. You can almost just look at it and give the answer. The answer is what? Seven. You know, so I mean, kind of, this is kind of the stuff, and I'm think I have some other ideas. I'm like, oh, I better not get any more ideas. I already got a lot of work to do at home, believe it or not. Um, I guess I have no idea. And I'm thinking of more work to do for myself. And take a look. It's really right here. When x is zero, graphically speaking, okay? The address here is 0, comma what? 7. All because you know about the behavior of some of these functions. Okay? So again, I'm going to say this over and over again. When you sketch that curve, we never picked up our pencil. Yes, you could use pre-calculus, but they don't want you to do that. Okay? You guys with me on this?